Yes, guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Daily Dose podcast. Today, we have yet another very special guest on the show. This guy has been the quickest rising star in battle rap that I can remember. He's reached top tier since day one. Mr. God is good himself, A Ward. What's going on, man? <laughs> Bro, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on, man. It's a it's a blessing. I appreciate the compliments as well. Um, very flattering. Um, like to attribute that, you know, to just King of the Dot, the Connects, the people that have offered me platforms to display my talent, and then just I guess myself taking advantage of the opportunities I've got. So thank you again, though. Definitely, man. No, it's been you're, you've got one of the best journeys in battle rap to watch, in my opinion. Like it's been incredible, and you're the the reason I'm so excited to get yourself on the show is you're one of the few people where I can say that I've seen every battle that you've done. Like there's a lot of people, especially from outside of the UK, where I've kind of become aware of them at a certain point of their career. Mm-hmm. But with yourself, I remember seeing the the Charlie Atlas battle on the Connects mm-hmm. probably about five years ago now. And that, that was your first battle, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. That was my first battle. First on-cam battle. Actually, it's probably, I mean, I had different ciphers and different, like, poetry slams that I did that you could kind of, but you weren't going directly at an opponent, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was first first battle um, that I had, three rounds. Nice, nice one. And how was it that you got into battle rap then? What what got you into it from the start? Yeah, my older brother was kind of like um kind of like my idol growing up. Uh my dad was kind of in and out at that time of our of our house. And so he was a rapper. He was a rapper of the family. Um he was very talented, made a lot of music, and he just kind of, you know, influenced me in what I listened to, you know, starting at a young age, probably like the age of seven or eight. Um and so I just I kind of became captivated by hip hop, and I uh, I started listening to hip hop. I started wanting to idolize him, write like him, do different things. Um, since he was like the rapper of the family, I kind of just wrote poetry. I didn't really try to like be a, a rapper. Um, when I got into high school, that's when he kind of put me on the battle rap. So we first started watching battle rap, and this is like early two thousands. Started watching like the Smack DVDs and different things, and so I became a fan of battle rap. Um, you know, through high school. And um, then into the grind time eras, the YouTube eras and everything, um, continued to follow it. Um, as I went out, I moved from home, went to college. I began writing more and more. I began actually starting to rap, putting out projects and different things as I got older. I noticed that my writing style was heavily influenced by the battle raps that I watched. So like, even as I'm making music and different things, I'm heavy with punchlines and wordplay and schemes and different things. So, um, you know, so that kind of was like the, 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 the foundation of me becoming a battle rap fan. And then as an artist, like battle rap kind of molding my, my style. And then we get into, you know, the transition into when I did first jump in the ring and battle Charlie. So. Okay. Nice man. Yeah. And it's, I've heard little bits of your music here and there as well. And I I can Mm -hmm. see that it was always you know, very punchline heavy yeah. and stuff as well. So that makes a lot of sense. But were you were you kind of a, attending events as a fan before you started battling or did you just literally jump in the ring? No, actually, I was talking to Loso, um, who's part of the, the Horseman. I was talking to him yesterday about this because this whole community of battle rap, I, I did not, I, I didn't know it existed. Um, even as a fan for probably 10 years before I ever started battling my, my fanship or fanaticism was merely just tied to going on YouTube and watching battles and possibly maybe commenting on YouTube. I didn't follow any battle rappers on, on social media. I didn't know there were battle rap groups. I didn't have a Twitter where I could see storylines or see any of this type of thing. I'd never went to events because there weren't any events that were near me really. Um, in, I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is Southeast United States. And in Atlanta really wasn't putting on anything when I was there. I moved to Kansas city, which is the Midwest of the United States in 2005. 
and St. Louis events, I just, I mean, it was, it was more difficult for me as a college kid to drive four hours and pay. And, you know, so I didn't, I really wasn't, you know, up to, up to date on when these events would occur. So I never, you know, I never did. My first battle rap event that I went to was in Kansas city. And it was like the event right before I battled. Um, so, and that was in like 2014, I think. And then the first time I ever went to like a legit big league battle rap event was when I battled franchise. So on King okay. of the Dot. That makes sense, man. Nice. I like it. And then like, I mean, with yourself, you've, you've done a lot of battles now. You've been very active since the get go, but for you personally, what, what would you say is like your favorite battle that you've been a part of so far? Ooh, uh, I think to this day, I don't, I mean, up until the Chef Trez battle of last year, it was the Bill Collector battle. Um, I think it's still the Bill Collector battle. I really, really, really love the Chef Trez battle um, that I had last year. But Bill Collector was one of my top three battlers. Like, I, he was one of my favorites growing up, like, th- through all of watching battle rap. He was so entertaining, um, and he was a bucket list battle. And so for one, to get a bucket list battle, two to battle bill collector in um philly which is close to norristown where he's from and to have like you know the the people that were there benny siegel was there freeway was there um you know a lot of the um a lot of guys that do christian hip-hop um came out and supported me um one of my best friends from kansas city went with me which is a great environment and then it was a great battle like it's you know like everything lined up so perfectly with the bill collector battle um, he did incredible. I did incredible. It was such an entertaining battle, bucket list favorite, you know, so you, you have all of those things, you know, balled up. I think to this day that that battle or that whole just weekend and event, you know, for me was my favorite experience so far. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what? I was not expecting you to say that battle actually, but really it makes a lot of sense, but yeah, I'm a, a huge bill collector fan myself. So I can yeah. appreciate that being, you know, a bucket list battle in that sense. But mm-hmm. you've uh, you've got to experience a lot with battle rap too. Like you've been, you must have performed in kind of twenty plus different cities and mm-hmm. well countries too by now. But like personally, for you, what's your what's your favorite crowd you've performed in front of so far? Oh, that's a good one. Um... You know, believe it or not, I liked the archaic battle when I came out and did the chalked out battle. It was at this um, underground lounge place um, when I battled him in London. And that was the first time I ever felt like an electric environment. Like there's something different about battling like in the UK. I feel like sometimes when you go to places like LA or you go to places like Toronto over on our side, they already have like the the fans are are kind of I don't want to say stuck up but they I mean they kind of are they're kind of like spoiled a little bit and the first time I went over to the UK and battled in London like the crowd like was looking at you like they were at their favorite band's concert you know like they weren't looking at you like let's see if this guy wins or let's let's judge his bars or anything like that they were looking at you like they were in you know the front row watching their favorite band like ecstatic happy to be there just ready to hear rap ready to have a good time and when I battled archaic like I could just I the electricity and the feeling and and just the camaraderie and everything in that room like it just it, it was just overwhelming for me and it was the first time I battled in like overseas technically you know um, I'd battled in Toronto but I don't think you call it overseas yeah so over the first time I battled overseas so it was the first time experiencing performing like you know and and saying wow like I have I I have a reach out here people follow me out all the way out here you know and so it was just a really cool really cool um time I can see that man and uh I I was lucky enough to be at that event as well so it was an amazing atmosphere in that room on the day and your battle was incredible as well like it's I think the thing for us here in the UK like I've I've been going to probably about six to eight battle events a year for the Mm -hmm. last maybe five or six years and a few before that. But the thing for us is, is during the don't flop era, 
we were so used to seeing internationals come over for every big card and kind of give a, a half ass performance. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in the last few years, that's really started to change since we've been booking people more like yourself, more like Mad Flex. Yeah. Ill Mac always comes over and kills mm-hmm. it. Like it's, it's you just know that, really uh, that crowd in Manchester, I didn't get a chance to perform in front of of them but like i could see that because would have been probably became my favorite that crowd that they did on the premiere event whenever um mad flex battled soul uh that was a very very fun crowd yeah yeah and it, i think that was down to the you know the the circumstances of the yeah. event as well which was mm-hmm. i unfortunately didn't make that event i was uh I got to watch the pay-per-view on a beach in Thailand, which I can't complain about. But, uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, I, I was really happy for those guys that, <laughs> that kind of came through as it did. And it's unfortunate that you and Shocks didn't go down as well, because I think that would have been probably yeah. battle of the night on the day. Yeah, I think I think Jay Short and Real Deal was really good, and then I think Rap, I mean, Raptor impressed a mess out of me. Him and Red Flag was really good. But like, if if I do what I do, and Shocks was, you know, if he was to, you know, come um, prepared, yeah, I think that I think that you're right that it, it could have definitely, or at least been just like icing on the cake if we went last, you know, like just it, you know, accumulation of everything and just really sent sent the event off well. But definitely, yeah, man, but. With yourself, then, have you got like a least favorite performance of yours? Like, is there any battles of yours that you don't tend to watch back or you don't like watching? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the Poe Rich battle. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily watch that back too much. Um, the funny thing is, a little background for me is like up until the Archaic battle. So up until like I battled Cortez a week before Archaic. Um, and the, the vets tell me this happens, you know, but you, you say, nah, it's not going to happen to me. Um, well, up, well, I battled Cortez and I'm always prepared like 10 days before every battle, like super prepared. Cause I'm still kind of like the new up and comer. Right. And so I'm, I'm battling peanuts and DNAs and real deals and all these guys and battling guys on the connects. And, you know, here I come, I'm battling Cortez and I took this battle up against Archaic the the week after. First time I ever battled like two weekends in a row. And quickly realized that, you know, well, I, I wasn't as prepared for Archaic as I as I needed to be. You know, I, I still did very well. I mean, a lot of people probably wouldn't, you know, say like, wow, you didn't look unprepared, you know, um, against Archaic. But um but so that that kind of same situation happened with the Poe Rich battle. I battled um carter deems the week before in atlanta and excuse me i didn't expect carter deems to be that difficult to write for and he was the most difficult battle i ever wrote for because you can't try too hard and you can't not try so i was trying to find that happy medium with carter and i was cutting material and stuff and so when i get to um you know toronto to battle poe rich I literally had two rounds and I I had like a day and a half, you know, to kind of basically write my third and memorize it. And, you know, I sat in the hotel and I tried and tried, tried. And then in my third round, it's just, it's just a little choppy. I fumbled over some very key points I wanted to, um, you know, basically uh, hit home with, you know, there was no chokes or anything. I just a little word fumbles and stuff that just really irritate me with my performance. So I would say probably that battle, and um outside of that battle like i said man i I guess it's a blessing with coming prepared you know and 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 being i don't i mean i'm 35 probably 35 battles in i don't know i haven't counted but um and i've i've never choked i've never you know had any places where i'm like oh i forgot the lines and had to get them back or anything it's just been minor situations where like a word fumble or said something different you know so i don't have too many that you know i'm like embarrassed or i'm like no i'll never watch that (laughs) Nice. No, I, I can see that. And I mean, with yourself, I guess it also helps that your your freestyle ability is crazy. Like the, Thank you. has that always been something that you're you've been good at, or have you kind of picked that up since starting battling? No. Well, um, 
yes and no. So I've always been very quick witted. Um, so like even growing up, like we get in joke battles and stuff with friends and different things like that, or, um, you know, I'd always have good comebacks, be quick, or like if, you know, me and my brother, uh, as we're battle rap fans, like we would just do exercises, you know, back and forth and do multi exercises, kind of like what, um, they were doing on that, um, I don't know what they used to call it on the Battle of the Zay site where they would kind of go back and forth with multis or whatever. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, but we would do like different like things like that. So I was always pretty quick-witted on my feet with rhyming words and kind of like freestyling and being funny. I think um, when I first started battling, I didn't really do much rebuttaling. I mean, I did maybe one or two in like those first few battles before um, St. Mike. And then um, I think when I first started on King of the Dot against Franchise, I was like, you know what? Like, I have to really um, separate myself from, from all the rest of these GZ guys. And that's the big thing about, like, battle rap and kind of being a, a ticket a seller and different things is, like, what can you bring to the table that's different, you know? So I was like, well, so, um, but since I've, since I've gotten more comfortable, you know, now um, I think you're seeing that, you know, I'm prepared to the point to where I can think about the freestyles. A lot of guys just, they don't have their stuff locked in or they're not trying to think of other bars. So they're not going to freestyle because they're still trying to rem memorize their own, you know, while they're standing there, but I stay pretty locked in. And then I just, I feed off the energy of my opponent. I mean, if you watch the chef Trez battle, he's one of the best rebuttalers in the world. And I rebuttaled right there with him. You know, we had some crazy rebuttals, you know, um, the Danny Myers battle that just dropped, Danny Myers didn't really rebuttal at all. I tried to rebuttal. I had some okay rebuttals, but like it, the energy and defeating off of the back and forth is kind of what really, what really gets me, you know, against Ilmac, he just finished a crazy um, round on me in the third round. And, uh, you know, I knew that he had, you know, did a great job with his third round. I, I felt like the pressure against me for my third round and I start off my third round with like a crazy rebuttal about him at the source, you know, so that's kind of where it's, you know, it, it comes from. Nice. No. And yeah, like you said, the, the chef Trez battle is, I mean, it, it's a contender for battle of the year for last year for me. Like it was absolutely amazing. I love the, I love the stuff that you have about, uh, didn't he, he said he was, he was battling in, Kansas City, Kansas State, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I thought that yeah. Was so like a lot of it's a so the the cool thing about the connects in Kansas City. Um, so Kansas City is on the border of the two states, Kansas and Missouri. Um, so there's a Kansas City, Kansas, and there's a Kansas City, Missouri. Now, everybody that knows like the Kansas city chiefs that won the super bowl or the Kansas city Royals who won the world series a few years ago in baseball, they're located in Kansas city, Missouri. Almost everything that is like popular is located in Kansas city, Missouri. So Missouri is very prideful about when you come to Kansas city, you know that you're in Missouri, you're not in Kansas. So there's kind of like this border war. So even Drake did a, a concert in our downtown and he said, thank you, Kansas, like at the end of his concert. And like the, the, everybody in the crowd is like, boo, you're in Missouri, you know, like, so it's like an ongoing thing with where we're from. So with that said, the Kansas City battle rap scene, the people that come to the battle rap events, they're not your typical, you know, fans like yourself that go to six, seven events that know the storylines that follow Twitter engagements that listen to YouTube interviews, right? They, they're not those guys. The Kansas City crowd is like, we know the murder mooks and the Sirius Jones, and we know, you know, we watch URL battles and King of the Dot battles, but they're very surface level. So I knew that with my material for Chef Trez, I couldn't do a whole bunch of heavy, like, um, what I call niche material. So like, unless you're a part of this niche of battle rap and you're like engulfed in it, that's when you get it. I couldn't do a lot of it. So I had to cater a little bit to our Kansas, you know, Kansas City and Kansas, uh, Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri crowd. So that's why I opened up with the state stuff and it really got the crowd like very into it. So, Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, I mean, the, the battle is absolutely incredible, man. And it's, Thank you. It, it's, it's really fun to see that you're, you're still battling on the connects as well. You know, a lot, of, a lot of battlers that make it to the point that you have in your career now, it, they, they kind of, 
move away from their home league in that sense. But you've always uh, you've always fucked with the connects a lot, which yeah. is good to see. I love them, man. They're they're they're, they're such um, such good guys. They're three of my good friends um invited to my wedding you know like they're just you know they're just really solid guys they enjoy putting on um and i enjoy performing in front of my city you know and so um i think that that chef tres battle you could see the crowd a lot of people say like oh the gas in that room and i'm like you have to understand like you're talking about a city that doesn't get a ward versus chef trez ever you know that doesn't get big name matches like they're excited they're just as excited as Houston was the first time Gnome came and you know Loso Scotty stepped on stage and they didn't even have to say a word the crowd was going nuts you know that's kind of how Kansas City is when it comes to the battle rap on a certain level sure that makes sense and like they they do have some pretty big events now too right they're, they're you know the crowd at the Chef Trez event looked really lively anyway so yeah is, yeah. It, is there any other kind of local leagues to you um, there's a there's a handful of other local leagues. Um, the Connects is kind of like the one that does. I'm big on professionalism. Like I like the flyer to look nice. I like the footage to look nice. You know, like if I'm battling on a local league in Kansas City that's not the Connects, it's because they're paying very well. You know, and I need it or like doing a favor, something to that extent. Um, but I, I like even when I battle on small leagues, you know, in other cities, if the flyer's terrible, I'll go get my own flyer made. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm really big on image and branding. So there's a handful. There's one called Throne Room. So I did a one rounder on it against a guy named Madden on short notice um, last year. And yeah, okay. Then there's um, a league uh, called. Well, actually, I, I don't think those other leagues are even around anymore. So yeah, it's really just the connects and then Throne Room. And, um, you know, when, when I battle on the connects, you know, I'm not trying to sound, you know, like, you know, egotistical or anything, you know, we get, you know, a few hundred people in the building. Um, you know, if I, if I'm not on the card, they still have a pretty solid following, you know, you can get, you know, 75 to a hundred people in the building or whatever. Um, so it's, it's, it's still a fun city to come perform at. If you've watched Danny Myers versus St. Mike, um, that's a great battle that the Canucks hosted and I wasn't on the card and it had a, it had a good turnout, had a good feel to it. The crowds all around them and everything in the pit style. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The, the, the St. Mike is still, I love that battle personally. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. I, I think that's the first time I actually saw St. Mike battle as well. So yeah. 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 I missed that venue. That's the same venue I battled, uh, Charlie Atlas in. So I battled Charlie Atlas and I did the one rounder against F mag and then the, the St. Mike battle. And the, the owners of the league actually owned that retro clothing store too. So we would host the battles in the, in their retro clothing store. And it was just a very fun venue. Uh, everybody loved going down to it. Um, and then some things happened with, with the venue or whatever, but yeah, it was a good time. Nice. Nice man. And um, yeah, like with, yourself then now so you you've obviously like i said you've been all over the place you've been kind of huge leagues and small leagues too but is there is there any aspiration for you to to kind of reach out to url at all i know that i remember reading something a long time ago now that you would have had to have done a pg i think which to me sounds ridiculous but has there been like any kind of interaction between you guys at all because i yeah, think you'd be a really good fit on url personally yeah you know um i'm not sure what our relationship is like uh i could say it's complicated um you know url was actually the first league to reach out to me so after my charlie atlas battle my first battle ever um norbs and queens flip uh reached out to me um just to kind of you know kind of tell me who they were and everything it was very flattering you know after one battle um they actually reached out to me about doing a pg before my saint mike battle which would have made sense back then i was you know three battles in um uh i took the pg and they put it on a flyer but then i had a uh, rotator cuff like labrum surgery on my shoulder and then i wasn't able to do it so i had to back out of it about a month early right. after that point when i started battling on king of the dot it was evident that the, the two people who reach out to kind of like the up and comers, which uh, is no, was at the time was Norbs and a guy named P 
it was evident they felt a certain way about me battling on King of the Dot. So the conversations that we would have after that about battling on URL um, were few and far between. In the last couple of years, as I've become like more and more of a, a, a big name, they still call, they offer guys, you know, they offer guys that are lower than my level. They offer battles that, you know, that are basically free or, you know, significantly less than what I'm, you know, getting paid everywhere else. Um, they offer, you know, just different scenarios. Um, and most of the time, I would say 90% of the time that I have conversations with them, uh, they always say that if I'm to come over there and battle, then I have to sign an exclusive contract to URL. And that's just, that's just not me, man. Um, you know, the exclusive contract would be that I can only battle on URL and then my home league, the connects. So I would not be able to do King of the dot events or RBE events. And it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, you know, for you to ask me to sign a contract to not promise any kind of signing bonus to not promise any kind of types of battles or any certain stages, but basically just say, you're our artist. We get to, you know, put you in whatever positions we want for the next two or three years. Trust us. We're the best league in the world. Sign this contract, you know? And so, yeah, I just, it would, it would be spit in the face to King of the Dot, who's given me plates and paid me very well and put me on platforms and helped build my brand. It'd be a spit in the face to RBE, who's given me the Danny Myers battle. And it's just, like I said, there's not any, there's nothing on the other side to where I could come and say, organic. ARP. They just offered me $30,000, you know, five, you know, 10 battles or something like that, you know, in three years, guaranteed these stages, you know what I mean? Something that I could say to somebody, you can't give me this, you know what I mean? So like, do you see why I would even entertain it? You know? Sure. No, I, I understand, man. And, you know, I, me personally, I'm, I'm not that big of a URL fan. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have kind of, battlers that i really like and then i have battlers that i just don't get on with whatsoever personally yeah. but like, the tough thing is that my style i think like you said like my style of how i rap i think would be very good over there you know what i mean um and i have a lot of people over there like people that watch url and love url like they they say on social media like get a ward over here they they recognize that i am a talent that can compete at a high level over there so i would love to battle over there you know it's always a bucket list thing to battle on you are to battle on those stages but n i'm not going to compromise the integrity of my value and what other people have done for me and helped me with you know in the last four years just to say i'm a url battler no no i appreciate that and it's it, it does limit your opportunities as well like you said you know if you were tied to a contract which for me personally as a as a fan of battle rap as a whole i i feel it i think it's a disgraceful way to run a business anyway but yeah like yeah i'm not a fan of it either um what's crazy is everybody needs competition you know and so to to pretend like you want to sign people exclusively to you and like basically put your foot on the comp you know like I feel like URL needs King of the Dot. King of the Dot needs RBE. You know, you need these guys to 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 have different cards and have competition because it drives you to do bigger and better things. You know, I don't think URL's doing the great things they're doing right now with caffeine and the different um, sponsors and different events they're bringing in. If they don't feel the pressure of Disaster versus Oxymoron, you know, a couple years ago and King of the Dot taking over and putting on crazy events, you know? And so there's nothing wrong with, you know, with having other leagues have their guys and stuff. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of shady to me. Definitely. Yeah. I completely agree with you. And it's, I mean, I don't, I don't think it would really boost your career that much to kind of go to URL either. Cause you know, you're getting, you've got a huge following as it is. And I, I know there's a lot of fans that are kind of specifically URL fans. We, we kind of saw that at the, the URL London event, like from what I've heard. Yeah. 90% of the room were people that you wouldn't see at any other UK based event, but yeah. And that's what it is, is, you know, even as an artist, like I, when I sell merch, you know, I have, you know, Instagram, I want to, you know, broaden my network. Um, and so there are 
you know, a, a good amount of people, um, you know, a good, a, say Shaq, for instance, who's, you know, a huge celebrity or whatever, you know, he's clicking on shotgun shook battles, you know, he's clicking on URL battle, you know, some of these guys that are on bigger, you know, celebrities and different types of things might only be in tune to the URL. Um, and then you got your fans that subscribe to the, if it ain't URL, it doesn't count. Um, but then you have to ask yourself, like, do I want people, you know, to follow me only because I'm tied to this particular company? You know, like you, I know you see me out here putting on and doing like you, you, it's more of an organic, no pun intended following. If you're watching me because you, you like a ward battles, you know, rather than I'm watching you because I like URL battles. Yeah. That also makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I see what you're saying. And mm. yeah. And I mean, with the contract deal as well, it would, it would, limit where you went with battle rap i mean you've been you've been canada you've been uk you've been to australia like all that would kind of come to a halt so mm -hmm. i definitely respect the decision on that front but i mean in terms of a, a very different question and this one i'm sure is going to be hard to answer with the amount of events you've been to now but what stands out for you as the best battle that you've seen live um let's see best battle i've seen live well you're right there's been a lot um you know what i'm gonna go with sharon and roan um okay yeah that one or sharon and chef trez um mm. man those that's two battles that are i mean that like wow to me you know um I'm trying to think back to some of the other King of the Dot events that I was at. Um, some of the URL events that I've been at. I really enjoyed Danny Myers and Mike P um, for the sake of just being able to live witness Mike P's second round against Danny Myers, which if you don't have the yeah. app, you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> um, and then um, I'd say there's probably – you know, Math versus Ill Will was a crazy battle to watch live. Um, I watched that at the RBE event. That that was just an incredible battle. Um, but yeah, that's probably a handful of them. You know, and then the Danny Meyer St. Mike battle on the Connects was was really really good too. Nice. Yeah, it's a, a very good list. I'm mm -hmm. I'm jealous of those battles that you've seen, to be honest. <laughs> but that's um. So you you mentioned the Ill Will battle there, so. It's going to lead me nicely into another question, but if you had a list of five battlers that you would battle next, like for your mm -hmm. next five, who reaches that list for you? Like, who do you want? And the the reason for me is, is I'd, I'd like to see you and Ill Will battle. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a crazy matchup. His ability to rebuttal. Um, he would be on the list. He would be, he would be probably at five. Um, I would like to battle daylight. I would like to battle, um, rum nitty. I would like to battle, um, Chilla Jones. And I had mentioned this the other day. I would like for 24 seven to come out of retirement and I would like to battle 24 seven. Um, okay. I, like that. I just think that would be a really good battle. Um, and then ultimately I want the title match. I'm not too keen on a rematch with real deal. Um, I, I, I probably would take it if they offered it because I don't know how many times you get offered, you know, a title match or how many times you're allowed to turn it down, you know? Um, but whoever's the, the, the title holder, you know, I would definitely like that. I was, I was really hoping that it was going to be Chilla because that's just a, bat, a battle that I really want. And I was like, man, if he's the, if he's the champ, you know, that would be a great title match. Definitely. Yeah, you and Chilla would be amazing to see as mm -hmm. well. But, yeah, I, I think personally, I think you are the, the top contender for the title. Um, I think Sharon is up there as well. Um, and I also... Personally, a lot of people have disagreed with me on this, but I I think Mad Flex is a contender too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, because because you and Real Deal battled. I mean, what was that now? About three years ago or so. Yep, it was the end of two thousand and sixteen. So right. it was almost yeah three and a half. Okay. Yeah. I mean, 
we rematches can often be fun. So, I mean, I, it's yeah, not I that, think it would pose a, a different, you know, like I've never had to rematch somebody. So I'd have to, you know, learn how to, you know, flip different things and use the battle before. So it, it definitely poses. I'm not against rematches. Um, I think it's a little, excuse me, a little bit soon. So, yeah, no, I can see that, but yeah, I would definitely like to see you go for the title at some point soon. And then, um, I mean, have you have you had any interaction with King of the Dot over the the blackout card at all? The blackout card that was supposed to happen? Yeah, so the the LA event. I think they've postponed it to the end of the year, right? Yeah, um there's no date that they've given me. Um you know, it was supposed to happen on April 19th. Um I was supposed to be on it. Um and uh I I know I know some of the other matches and everything. Um I really didn't Man, so this is kind of a little off topic. So success to me in battle rap is not necessarily defined by a title or amount of money or anything like that. I really love traveling. I love battling different places. I love meeting different people. And I just love enjoying like, being myself and like forming friendships and different things through battle rap. Um, I wasn't keen on battling in on the West Coast again. I already did. You know, Peanut was in L.A. I did Mad Flex and I did Ilmac in Oakland and then back to L.A. again. Like, I was just thinking, like, man, like, I really want to go somewhere else, you know. Um, I've never been on a massacre. I've never been to Boston. Um, but, you know, with that said, like, there's not very many events every year that King of the Dot does throw, so you can't really just pass up on opportunities. But I'm hoping that it gets up and gets back running and, you know, they're able to, you know, uh, pinpoint a date and then we can continue, you know, to to, to work towards it. Sure. Yeah, man. And, I mean – I'm just asking for myself more than anything. I've uh, I've never been to the States and I'm actually, my plan was to come over for the first time at the end of the year for, I was assuming that they'd be doing town business three, mm-hmm. um, which obviously may now be blackout LA instead. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, I'll tell you this much, like some of the matchups that I've heard obviously won't ruin them, but you know, um, it was, it was going to be big. It was going to be town business two, you know, on, on steroids, which town business two was already big. Um, so with some of the returns and stuff, so I would just say, you know, I would encourage people that, you know, um, that, that, that blackout event and plus being at a blackout event with the Rolodex and everything is just kind of, I mean, it's kind of a, uh, a great, um, experience in itself. Yeah. It's, it's bucket list stuff for me to be honest. So, I've got to be there, but yeah, it'd be great to see you on that card as well. And I mean, in terms of the King of the Dot roster, there's, you definitely deserve your place on the card too. But like, like you said, so you, you, your main goal really is, is traveling. So is there anywhere left for you apart from, you've mentioned Boston, but anywhere else that you'd really like to go in the near future battle wise? Yeah, you know, like I said, um, I just got booked for Rap is Full in Ireland um, the first quarter of 2021. So we went ahead and put it out far enough to where we at least would have an idea that, you know, with the quarantine and everything that we can actually have the event. Um, so that's that's going to be great in Dublin. Um, there's some leagues all over the place that, you know, every now and then have an event. I know Marv One has battled in South Africa before. I think Lex Luthor battled in South Africa um, there's a league in New Zealand that I've been in talks with for the last couple of years um, that, you know, we've, we've become very close to booking it and, and making it happen. Um, You've yeah, got just, one it, outs then. Yeah. One outs. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, that it's just, you know, those kind of places. And then obviously like uh, I'd love to battle, you know, like in a, in a, on a, on a natural, like a legit New York, you know, New York city crowd. Um, you know, if it's a, if it's a URL or RB, whatever, um, uh, yeah, just, just, just pretty much any city anywhere, man. I'll, I'll go to Cleveland, you know, I'll go to, uh, wherever, you know, just, I can, I can get in my hotel. I can drive around. I can see some, see the football field or see different things in that city that I've never seen before. So. Yeah. It's a, it's a good attitude to have, man. And, uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, with the one outs battle then there's, I'm not I'm not too in touch with the the scene over in New Zealand but there's there's a guy that I've become a huge fan of recently called PFAC over there. Yeah, yeah, PFAC, good people. Yeah. Um I mean 
I'm hoping that they, they want to set you up against him. Is that right? Yeah, that that's definitely a possibility. Um, when I went to Australia, uh, when I went to Brisbane to battle uh, LJ was the guy's name. I met PFAC. He battled on that card too. Um, and, uh, and just a real solid guy. I had a great following, you know, we, we, we networked, we kept in contact, you know, support him heavily. Um, and if he's the, you know, if he's the guy, you know, that over there, you know, then that probably would make the most sense. Um, we have commonalities. I think he's a Christian. I don't know that he's necessarily identified as like a Christian battle rapper. Um, but he's definitely like, um, um, kind of a stand up guy. So, you know, I still don't think that that would prevent us from battling, um, but when I talked to the two gentlemen that run the one outs league, um, you know, they had never, they had never given me like a specific opponent. Um, I think Carney is in, in New Zealand now. No, no, Carney's actually in London. Yeah. I don't know. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Carney's in London. There was another battler who was at that Australia event that's in New Zealand battling now too. But, um, I know there's probably two or three guys that are probably possibilities, but yeah, PFAC, very talented dude. Nice. Yeah, I'd love I'd like to see that a lot. I, I think he he kind of deserves a big plate too. I'm not sure that he's really he's been given a, a proper international as such to my knowledge. So I'd like to see that a lot. But like with the there's one battle of yours that I'm not sure about. So the hungry battle. Mm-hmm. Where was that? Iowa. Okay. So I was about was in Des Moines, Iowa, which is about three hours north of Kansas City. So it's still considered Midwest. Okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I thought that battle was in Alaska. I have no idea where I got. I that did battle from. in Alaska. I did battle in Alaska against um, Knox. Okay, that'll yeah. be where I'm getting mixed up. Yeah. Then. So that one was in a Fairbanks. No, yeah, Fairbanks, okay. Alaska. Nice. So, yeah, you really have been all over all the place. All over the place, uh, man. Alaska was 23 hours of daylight. That was like an experience in itself. Only one hour of, of nighttime. And it wasn't even night. It was basically what you would consider dawn, you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I lived in the north of Sweden for a couple of years, and it's similar there. So, mm, yeah. Strange experience, right? Yeah. Nice. But, um, yeah, I mean, one of the... Well, the final question, battle rap related anyway, which most people have kind of found the hardest to answer so far. So I do apologize in advance. But if you were promoting your own event and you had unlimited funds to put a card together, what battles do you personally want to see and what what are you booking for your card? Oh, wow. Um I'm booking Thesaurus and Iron Solomon. Yeah. Um, I'm booking Hitman Holla and New Jersey Twerk. I'm booking um, hmm. such a good question. I'm booking Let's see. Man. Um, I'm booking Pat Stay versus. Who do I want Pat Stay to battle? Again, it's it's ill will for me. I'm desperate. Yeah, to see that. I like I like that. I like that. I like it will or I like I like the K Shine because I know K Shine is he's a different conundrum and just to kind of see Pat stay um belittle his aggression and stuff, I think it would I think it would pose and K Shine to me is an incredible performer. I yeah. think that he would do his own thing. Um I'm booking um I might book John John to Don and Sue Surf. I like okay. that grudge match. I like yeah. that grudge match a lot. Um, I'm booking Chilla Jones versus Real Deal Ford. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but I would like to see. I would like to see. Um, 
I booked Marvin Quest versus me and Loso. Mm, okay. I think that would be fun. Um, but yeah, that's I mean that's a handful of them. I know I'm leaving off because I I I really want to see uh, Chilla and Real Deal have plates, and I want to see. Uh, I'd love to give Geechee Gotti on there too. Um, you know, my, obviously my brothers Loso and Saga and Streams. I'd love to have them on there too. But like, if we're just talking like you know what what are matches that I think the world needs to see that might not ever happen? Even Briz Rothstein and Murder Mook, like after this whole fight and everything, like those are just battles, you know. But like, I could go in and say, you know, just personal, you know, favorites too. So. Yeah, no, of course, man. I like those suggestions a lot. And on the subject of Geechee, like, so am I right in saying that you, so you battled Danny Myers on RBE and then did the two-on-two with Loso against B-Dot and Geechee in the same week? Is that right? Well, Saturday and Saturday. So it wasn't the same weekend. So it was it was, it was seven days away. That is crazy. Yeah, so we I battled, and, and well, the... Geechee battled Twerk too that same night. So February 29th, which was Leap Day, um, we had URL and RB had two events in Atlanta. Mm. I battled Danny Myers and Geechee battled Twerk. And then the next week was the two on two in, um, it was in Jersey somewhere. And uh, so our our partners, Loso and B Dot, they both hadn't battled in a while. Um, so they kind of had some opportunities to be, you know, just brainstorming ideas and different things. But myself and Geechee, I mean, we were very, very locked in for our individual op- opponents. Um, Geechee killed Twerk in that battle. It was a really bad Twerk performance. And then I had a really good performance against Danny that I knew was very important. My debut on RBE and it's Danny Myers. So getting ready for that next week, like I put a lot of effort into it the week, excuse me, the week of. Um, and, but it helps too, you know, being a two on two and being able to memorize your bars off your, off your partner and different things. But yeah, I will say that I, uh, <laughs> I impress. there's very, I say few, there's few times where I just impress myself. I'm like, wow, you, you did it. You survived. You you got through it, you know, <laughs> and that, that week getting through Danny and getting through the two on two, I look back and I was like, Phew. well, you did it, Aaron. <laughs> Yeah, fair play, man. It's incredible. And I watched the uh, the two-on-two battle this morning, actually, because it got released last night, I think. And mm-hmm. it's it's incredible. Like, it, it really is. And I like the narrative behind it as well, because obviously you, you and Geechee have battled, B-Dot and Loso have battled, and it, was, it, it seemed like, you know, you were very focused on B-Dot, whereas Loso was very focused on Geechee and vice versa. So... Yeah, we tried to make sure that, you know, that's some of the little things that people um, kind of, you know, I'm glad you noticed it, you know, but like made sure that we stood in front of the right opponents. We made sure that, you know, our material, even as we went back and forth, you know, like I would say things like the ancestors and Loso would say the hand gestures and they would apply to the person we were in front of rather than applying to the the, the, the two on two group, you know, Um and so, yeah, it was it was definitely part of it. It's just like you know, like we'll, we'll we'll do it this way that in case in the future they want to do a one on one battle, it makes sense. Definitely, yeah, and it was it was amazing. But I mean, the the battles on King of the Dot was it was it an actual event or was it just a one off battle in that sense? So, a league had just formed um, called Guardians of the Culture. They had probably done. I would say four events. That's um, where you battled Mac Myron. Is that Mac right? Myron? Yep. And um, Real Deal battled Marv One, I think, on one of their first events. Um, and uh, so they basically this this league owner came onto the scene. He had revenue, had good good money, and instead of like building a small league and you know bringing guys in, he just decided he wanted to start paying big name guys to come down and battle on his league. Um, this happens every few years. Um, so they put on three or four events and people were getting paid. They were getting paid. Well, it was happening in Florida. Um, good, you know, good weather to go down to. So I battled Mac Myron on it, you know, got paid well, had a good time, a lot of good battles. So then he books this event with the two on two and he moves it to Jersey. And I guess at this point he's done four events and he's thinking like, how can I kind of, you know, do some things better? So he reaches out to King of the Dot to use their pay-per-view system, kind of like RBE does sometimes, where you have to go to like, 
uh, King of the Dots, I guess, homepage to get the RBE pay-per-view, whatever it may be. So he reaches out to them and they kind of collaborate in a sense on Avocado coming out to film it and doing the production better, you know, and different things. So we get to Jersey. The turnout is not nearly what this, this guy expects. The battles go on. The battles are not very good. Um, whenever me and Loso got to the venue, they said, you're on next. Now, mind you, we didn't know that the battles leading up were not very good and the crowd was very sporadic. So you'll notice like in our first round, people were talking about how our first round is like so amazing and creative. The crowd reaction still isn't there because we're trying to get the crowd engaged into battle rap. They're really kind of not there. So, um, you know, we do the battle. Well, after the battle, this particular league owner decides that, you know, he didn't make enough money to pay anybody. Um, so he starts to get kind of pressed by certain individuals in regards to their second half payment. He makes promises. He just says, I promise once I get my pay-per-view money in, I'll have it all out. Um, you know, there's different stories, different things that have happened, but he basically goes home. Quarantine happens. He goes ghost and he doesn't pay most of anybody, any of their second halves. So, um, from what I understand, he was indebted to battlers. He was indebted to King of the dot for helping with like getting avocado involved in different things. And so even though they were kind of a collaborative event, king of the dot basically said since you you know since you've gone ghost and you owe this and that we're going to take the battles and release it on our channel okay that makes sense and uh mm -hmm. serves him right yep i like it and it, i mean if we're being honest it's it's gonna it's gonna bring a lot more views in for yourselves to have that battle on definitely dot, definitely so. it just sucks because i mean when we released the battle yesterday um it's it's not King of the Dots pro I don't say problem. It's not their um responsibility to pay the battlers, you know? Like they didn't they didn't book this event, you know? And they were they were owed as well. So they got their they were, you know, compensated by taking the footage. So there's still battlers like us, our two on two and people like franchise and different guys that battled on that event that didn't get their get paid. So when they released a battle yesterday, myself and Loso, you know, we just, we made a post about it on our social media. We just made one post and we just said, you know, Hey, you know, even though we didn't get paid, um, you know, half of our money, we okayed it for it to be released. And, you know, if you'd like to donate, you know, to help us out, you know, because technically we could have said, Hey, we didn't get paid in full. That battle's not coming out. I'll reuse the material. We'll redo the battle when we get paid. You know what I mean? Um, so we just put on our social media, like, if you'd like to donate, if you enjoy the battle, you know, please, you know, just here, here's a way to donate to us to kind of, so we can be compensated for what we're supposed to be compensated for. And the battle rap community really, they really did their thing, man. Like I said, we didn't push it heavily. We weren't begging or anything. We just made a post and said, here's what it was. If you like the battle so much and you want to throw a dollar, two dollars, whatever, you know, and, um, you know, we, 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 we've been taken care of, man. It worked out really well. Nice. Okay. I like that, man. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's obviously it's just good that we we still got to see the battles released. Yeah, was that? I think it it kind of makes sense to me now. So was that the event where RD Boom was meant to battle DNA? Then is that right? Yep, RD Boom was, and K Shine was meant to battle Big Cannon, and I think Big Cannon got into a car accident, possibly the week before. And there was some issues with that battle. I don't know if it was specific to that car accident or if there was some issues just with K-Shine, you know, it was payment or what. But that battle didn't happen either. So Drug stepped in and battled DNA. DNA ended up dropping that battle on his own channel because I don't think he was compensated his second half. So he just took the battle and put it on his own channel. And then there's some other battles that have still not been released. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, it's a shame that these promoters do pop up every now and again, but at yeah. least the, at least the footage came out, I guess. And it's, it's definitely going to benefit yourself from being on King of the Dot too. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Always good. Worked out good. Nice. But I mean, the final thing battle rap related, I guess is, uh, congratulations are in order. I mean, you, uh, you won the King of the Dot battler of the year, right? Yes. Yes, man. That was, um, it was a tough race, man. I would not have been mad if Ilmac or Sharon would have won it. Um, I think it was like a three. I think it was down to us three personally for me. 
Um, you know, personally, I wouldn't have been mad if Real Deal won it just because he won the championship twice, you know, like even though he didn't battle as many times and people would probably say that those battles were not, you know, as memorable as some of ours. I could understand with the, the chain being on the line, him being your champion, winning it and defending it, you know, if they if it would have went that that route. Um, but, you know, most of all, you know, it was a it was a fan vote. Then it was media. They had five different media uh, personalities from all across Battle Rap. So I know like Let's Talk Battle Rap has a podcast. They had guys from there. They had just different different people. And then they had staff. And so it gives you a, a good um, idea of like, you know, the different personalities, the fans, you know, they might vote for whoever's their favorite regardless. You know, the media might have certain things and then the staff, you know. So it was just kind of like really flattering to 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 be voted King of the Die Battle of the Year from from all of my peers, the fans, and all those people. So definitely, yeah, and it's a huge compliment to yourself for the year that you had as well. I think it was deserved. So congratulations on that front, man. It was great to see. But thank you. I've um I've been ending the the episodes with a couple of like music based questions and then three very random questions at the end, but. Okay. The first music one is it, it is another difficult one, but if you had to pick your top three all time favorite albums off the top of your head, what would you go with? Oh man, um, I would go with Blueprint from Jay Z. Okay. Um, I would go with The Block Is Hot from Lil Wayne. And what would be my third? My third would probably be this most recent album, The Book of Ryan by Royce of Five Nine. Mm, okay. Those are three albums that I probably could just sit to and listen to all the way through just because they come at very different points in my life. And they're, they're three of my favorite rappers of all time. So it's a good list, man. And, uh, Jay, both Jay Z and Lil Wayne. Um, I think this is episode seventy-two that I've recorded now, mm-hmm. and Jay Z and Lil Wayne haven't been mentioned yet. So <laughs> to get some variety there. I could go into like you know I was raised on country and bluegrass, so there's a few albums you know that that are specific to me. Some Joe Diffie albums and different things like that. As I was raised on you know with uh with my family my dad is like a he, he kind of plays the mandolin and different things like that and so I have some other you know taste in music but as far as just influential to me like in my 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 what I like the most those three makes sense I like it man it's good answers and like what would you say is the best live act that you've ever seen in terms of like concerts or shows that you've been to uh, it, it would be Slaughterhouse. I haven't been to a lot of concerts. So um, it's funny. My wife's seen Eminem live. She's seen like Jay-Z and Beyonce. She's seen, you know, Blink-182. She's like, she was a concert person. I, I never was in high school. I didn't go to a lot of concerts. Um, and then when I got older, my taste in music was more like underground hip hop. Um, so the concerts I did choose to go to, like I went and saw Watsky live. I went and saw Slaughterhouse. I went and saw... Um, uh who else uh, i mean i've seen tech nine up here from kansas city different things like that um but yeah slaughterhouse to me because that's that's my favorite rap group of all time you know joe budden crooked eye joe ortiz royce five nine all four there and it was in a smaller venue so it was like you were like really a part of the, the energy there so nice yeah I, I can imagine that's that was incredible to be fair and just just seeing royce the five nine is like something I really want to do, whether it's yeah. a solo gig or not, like he's amazing. But is there is there any like lesser known musicians that you're a big fan of that like myself or the listeners might not be aware of? Um lesser known. It's so weird because music was such a huge part of my life, like high school, college days. But now as a battle rapper, like I don't listen to a lot of music except for stuff that I used to listen to back then, you know? Um, so I don't like listen to a lot of the new music. Um, there's a guy named Cormega, uh, C-O-R-M-E-G-A is from, um, New York that I used to listen to a lot that I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, big fan of his. Yeah. Um, 
there's a guy, uh, a guy by the name of Wax. I don't know if you've listened to Wax. He's on the West Coast that I like. I like a lot of his stuff. He does a lot of things that are kind of Watsky-ish, like the, you know, just very um, creative and witty. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to check um, him out. And then uh, I'm trying to think. One person that I don't know why uh, that I've been listening to um, from Detroit, and it's a newer type of uh, rapper, is uh, Sada Baby. And I don't know why I like it, because it's not the type of music that I would normally like. It is kind of like your newer type of music. But for some reason, his songs and just the production and everything and that this new Detroit flow uh, has, got, has like is stuck in my head all the time. So Nice. Yeah, it's good. Good list, man. And uh, mm -hmm. the final three, as I said, they are very random. I think mm -hmm. I know the answer to the first one. But are you a, a big sports fan and do you have a favorite sports team? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's my, that's my livelihood. Like I like sports more than I like battle rap. And uh, <laughs> so I have a sports podcast. We have a sports podcast called it's a black and white thing. The, that's uh, me and my best, one of my best friends that we do. Um, you can find it by just searching the hashtag brains and bars. He's very intellectual, obviously on the sports podcast. I'm always, I got different creative and witty comebacks and different bars that have to go with my takes. Um, but yes, uh, I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, where the University of Tennessee is. I grew up heavily um, favoring college football, college uh, sports. So the University of Tennessee, anything orange, anything that has to do with Tennessee, um, that, is, that is where my fanaticism lies. Um, I moved to Kansas City in 2005, and I became a Chiefs fan, a Chiefs follower. Um, they had players on their team that played at the University of Kansas City and I never really had an NFL team because there wasn't one in Tennessee at the time when I was growing up. So okay. I would consider myself, you know, a fan of um, the University of Tennessee first and foremost. And then, you know, I, I do support my Kansas City Chiefs and my Kansas City Royals as well. Nice. Yeah. And I can imagine that around the time of the Super Bowl, Kansas City was an incredible place to be, right? Yeah, it was, man. It was. It's so it's so funny how sports bring everybody together. You know, the most crazy things can be going on in society and all of the, you know, opinions and politics and different, you know, wild things that are going on in the news. And then you get a city that wins the Super Bowl or the World Series or the world cup or whatever it might be you know and then everybody's everybody's best friend and there's hundreds of thousand people downtown partying <laughs> yeah i can imagine it was amazing man and uh yeah like for me personally i've recently become a huge nfl fan so mm -hmm. it's a, as a sport it's never been very accessible in the uk mm -hmm. until recently so within the last two seasons they've They've started doing the NFL show on TV, mm -hmm. which is straight after match of the day, which is the, the Premier League soccer oh, okay. highlights. So I kind of started watching it by mistake after match of the yeah. game one day and ended up realising what I've been missing out on and become a huge yeah. fan. And for me, being a, a recent fan, like I only followed it for the season that's not long finished. Mm-hmm. I mean, just getting to witness Patrick Mahomes and how incredible of a player he was. Like, Yeah, it, he's a special, special guy, man. He really is. Yeah, it was exciting to watch. And what an amazing performance in the Super Bowl as well. Cause they, they looked like they were really up against it for yep. you know the first three quarter, uh, quarters and then out of nowhere. I mean, his performance in particular was amazing that's Did another you know? one of my uh bucket list things though is one i, I want to come out to the uk and i want to go to a, a legit like a premiere i don't know you know i don't know a whole lot about it um but i just want i want to experience what i guess you guys call it football what it's like out there you know yeah yeah definitely do um i'm a like a, a absolute liverpool fanatic really and I may be biased, but nowhere compares to Anfield. So if you come yeah. over, that's what I want. That's what, that's what I want too. I want the most, you know, just like if somebody came here, I would say, Hey, you have to go to this stadium or this, you know, that's, that's where you'll, you'll get the full um, experience, you know? And it's so wild to me because I've never been a fan of 
it's like soccer or any I've never been I'm not you know and when I came over to Battle Archaic I remember there was a match before that event and I was in the back room and I think that Tony D had just come from that match and he was talking to somebody else about this and I was just watching them talk about the match right like I had my energy up and then like I think the match ended like one nil or something and I'm like how how are you so excited about something that only had one point scored in the whole match you know and so like okay. but just just to know like it's a, it's a different atmosphere it's a different environment and it's you know the the crowd and everything like I have to come experience it definitely yeah yeah I mean check out some footage on YouTube because UK matches are great, but generally speaking, I find the atmosphere to be better in Europe than it is in the UK. Okay. If you look at footage on YouTube of a club called Borussia Dortmund, okay, that will blow you away. Like, okay, they, yeah, I'll have to check that out. Their, their stadium's quite strange in the sense of behind the one goal, they have a stand which is kind of three times higher than the rest of the stadium. I think it holds about 35,000 people in one stand. Um, wow. And it's known as the yellow wall because the Dortmund play in a yellow shirt. And that's the, cool. It, it is one of the cool, I, I've been myself and it's, it's the best experience in soccer, in my opinion. So awesome. Yeah. yeah I'm going to check that out. Yeah. But I'll, uh, I'll check the podcast out as well, man. That sounds really fun. So yeah, thank you. See, I'll, check that this week but um if you could as you like traveling a lot this is a good question too but if you could go anywhere in the world for your next holiday or trip abroad where would you go oh man um i'm not you know this is the right answer wherever my wife told me she wanted to go <laughs> um <laughs> Um, you know, I, I would like to visit, um, Paris, France. I would like to go to, um, um, there's places in Scotland I'd like to visit. Um, I'm not like, I don't have that, that bucket list of like, oh, I, I have to be in, you know, uh, Cabo or Bora Bora. Well, you know, I don't, I don't have like any of that. I just like, I kind of go where the wind takes me really. and just enjoy where I'm at. But, um, but I definitely know that when I did come out to London, like I really wanted to go over and, and, and see the Eiffel tower and go to Paris and kind of do that. And we weren't able to. Um, so that, that, that definitely would be something I would enjoy. Also, um, Iceland. I have a friend that went to Iceland and I just looked at his pictures and they were just gorgeous. And I was like, man, I, I need to visit Iceland sometime one day. Yeah, Iceland's amazing, man. Very expensive, but yeah, <laughs> really good fun. But where would you say is the your favorite place that you visited so far? Then, so far, um, I really loved. I really love London, but I love Brisbane too. Um, Brisbane was, man, they were just they were very, very, very nice people. Very different type of people. Very, very down to earth. Um, London was a little bit muggy for me, like weather wise, like it just seemed like it was just very rainy or cold or kind of, um, and it could have been the time I was there, but I've heard that it's just kind of like that all the time. Oh no. Welcome to our lives, man. That's every yeah. day over here. Yeah. Um, and also when I was there, like, and they might still like big Ben was under construction, uh, like everything that we wanted to kind of see was kind of, it was kind of like a cluster just trying to get around and everything. But we were, we spent what, four or five days there and we were able to, you know, it was a great, great experience, but there was just some things, but I would probably say, you know, the, the, being in Australia, I was walking up on kangaroos, you know, out in the <laughs> wildlife. I was, you know, on beaches, different things like that. It was a, it was a very, very cool experience. So. Yeah, I can imagine, man. That's that's cool. But um, the final question, and this one has brought a mixture of answers, to be honest. But you can pick one sweet and one savoury. But what for you are the go-to snacks? Oreos. I'm an Oreo fanatic. I eat Oreos and milk pretty much three or four nights a week. Nice. Um, yeah, and then um. What else do I like? Man, I love, I love sherbet ice cream. 
Um, okay. So I like like rainbow sherbet or orange sherbet ice cream or just like a custard, something like that. Like those are those are my two favorite snacks um, per se. Nice. I like that. No, they they're good answers, especially compared to what I've had so far. Anyway, so <laughs> I like that a lot. But apart from that, man, that's uh, that's pretty much all the questions done. But is there? Is there anything that you wanted to plug on the show that like the UK listeners might not be aware of or any links that you want in the description once the video drops? Yeah, of course. You know, I am award.com is my website. Uh, so you can go there. And if you don't already follow me on social media, there's a place for all my social media hyperlinks where you can click and follow me on Instagram and Twitter and um, find my Facebook and different things. There's a merch tab where you can find my merch store if you want to buy shirts, tank tops, hoodies, any of that. There's a battles tab. I need to go in and update it. It's been, I don't even think I've updated it. Wow. Since probably the beginning of this year, I usually go and add all of my battles to my website so that if anybody's just trying to look for a ward battles, they can find them there. So there's a tab there where you can go back and watch all of my battles. But nice. yeah, just uh, imaward.com. Check us out there. I already mentioned the podcast. And then, um, no, thank you, man, for having me on. I appreciate it. Great questions, great content. Thank you, man. Yeah, it just seemed like the we're in like full lockdown still over here. So I started the podcast mm-hmm. on the first of the first of April, um, and we're already on episode seventy four, seventy five, something like that. So it's wow. kept me busy. But yeah, yeah, I, I really appreciate your time, man. And uh, on the subject, actually, of the merch, I saw you post. You posted a, a red hoodie the other day. I think mm-hmm. it's a horseman's hoodie. Yep. Um, couldn't find it on the website, man. So yeah, let me so know where I can get one. Um, of that's my fault. So I have my own website with my merch. Um, the horseman hoodie, I'm splitting profit and funds with Loso because we both kind of came up with the idea and, you know, paid the money to get the hoodies through a distributor distributor so um they're on his site so i'll I'll link you to his his website um and you can go in and take a look um we're sold out of a couple different sizes but we're we're getting more in but yeah i'll definitely send you the link perfect yeah do it man i love those they were amazing Mm -hmm. but yeah again thank you very much for coming on man it's been amazing to speak to you and uh hopefully catch you at uh blackout la at the end of the year thank you again man stay safe healthy uh hope all is well with your family man god bless thank you man you too take care Uh, bye